This is my budget turbo truck 1988 Toyota pickup. I bought this thing for $500 not running with no engine. It had been sitting in a field for years. And so to get it running, I bought a 1999 Toyota Tacoma and stuffed the entire running gear. Engine, transmission, wiring harness, interior, and everything I could. After that, I went and put a turbocharger on the side of it. After I turbocharged it, I intercooled it, turned the boost up, and that's where we are today. We've got the 88 turbo truck back in the garage and we're doing some more upgrades to it today. I made a call and I made an appointment at a dyno to see what this thing makes. Um, they were like, put fresh plugs in it, make sure it's got oil in it, make sure it's got fuel in it. We've done all the maintenance and oil change, air filter, fuel filter. We're gonna do a little bit more fuel upgrades. So this thing is running stock injectors and stock fuel rail and stock fuel pressure regulator. And I wanna turn the fuel pressure up just a little bit. In order to do that, I went ahead and I pulled this off of my Supra that's running a 3RZ. This is a 2RZ, but they're the same injectors, same head and everything. And these injectors are the pink top, as they call them, and they flow the highest rate of the stock injectors that came on the 2 and 3RZs. And I went ahead and grabbed the fuel pressure regulator too that's adjustable so I can turn the fuel pressure up just a little bit to compensate for the extra boost that the engine's getting. And I also went ahead and grabbed a fuel filter just because since I'm doing all this, I might as well make sure that I have the absolute best flow I possibly can. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull the injectors off of this thing. I'm gonna pull all this intake piping off. I actually got some, a little bit cooler temp spark plugs. So I'm gonna put spark plugs in it. I went to go change this fuel rail out and I was like, man, this fuel rail was finger tight. This side's tight. The back fuel rail bolt was finger tight. I'm gonna fire it up, make sure there's no fuel leaks, make sure that everything looks good so that we can take it for a test drive, make sure everything still feels good, and tomorrow we're 100% ready. We've got an appointment at a dyno to see how much power this thing makes. It's been super reliable thus far, so of course I'm gonna modify it the day before I make an appointment at another shop at a dyno. Um, you know, car guys. about 30 PSI fuel pressure. No puddles, no puddles. Everything's a little dry. Everything seems to look good. We got about 48 PSI of fuel pressure as base pressure. All right, we're on our way to the dyno appointment. It's 9.45, dyno appointment's at 10 o'clock. Uh, we're just around the corner. We got a full tank of gas. We got a full thing of oil. Uh, make sure the coolant's all good to go. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this thing uh, ready. I'm a little anxious because uh, never done anything like this. I'm really hoping for like 250 on horsepower. I don't know I'm gonna get that, but I'm really hoping for that. So we'll see what it does and uh, turn the boost up from like 10 to 11 to like 14 ish. So. It's a little spicier, a little more boost. Can only hope. Yeah. I think water dry. 
Yeah, it gets a little, it gets a little weird. Think I should turn the base fuel pressure down? I can do that real quick. It's at like 47, 48. Was happier with the O2 sensor? So it was happier between I guess. here and here, but up top, it didn't like it. it yeah, I, I, I've noticed that. that so it, down low, I would leave it plugged in. Cause down, so down low, you're not into boost really yet. Okay. It's okay. I mean, yep. kind of nope. I, that's, this is why I wanted this in to talk to somebody yeah. that knows this stuff is so I can know yeah. what to do and what's safe. This cool. is good. I, I like that. It's not bad. I, li I like the fuel. I like the power that it makes. This right here is drivability. Yep. And that's tune related. So from, from here to here, as you can see, when I started the pole, it dipped down and it didn't want it drive a little funky until yep. I actually full wide, wide open. open. It had enough air to, for, yeah. to match the fuel. But wide open, this is what I want to see. Cool. Yeah, this might be a little rich, but that's okay. I'd rather rich it in here. Exactly. That's where I was at. That's exactly where I've been at. You can't tune it out. Exactly. You're, you're where you are, where you are. Exactly. Until you, it could also be the map location. Okay. It could also be the map location. Think moving the map could help that? Well, yeah, absolutely. Okay. It could just be a map. All right, this is the last pull. First few pulls, we're in second gear. This is going to be in third gear. We're going to run it all the way out and uh, plug the O2 sensor back in. It actually ran better with the factory O2 sensor. way home with a very 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 slippy transmission well I think the dyno appointment killed the transmission I uh oh it's moving now I'm not sure if that new whine is audible but now there's a transmission whine Kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. So, who knows? It is what it is. I think this transmission is toast. Uh, I made it almost home. I'm actually on my dirt road, but there is there's there's no more transmission left. Uh, I I was on the highway on my way home and it felt real funny and. Uh, Usually that sends me forward. Um, there's not much I can do. So I guess it's time to either upgrade this automatic. Maybe I'll go back to a manual. I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, this, uh, this automatic transmission is without a doubt toast. For now, I think the turbo truck is done. No more driving the turbo truck. 250 wheel horsepower was too much for the A43 transmission in a two wheel drive Tacoma. Now we know. So next thing I got to do is a transmission swap. Well, turbo truck is hurt. Oh, I'm so glad I made it home. Oh, I just want to take a second to talk about how stoked I am with this thing, how impressed I am with this thing. 300,000 mile engine and transmission just made 250 wheel horsepower through a Hurt automatic transmission. That's just awesome. I'm super stoked. I'm super stoked with this build. I'm excited to get it back on the road. I'm not, not happy about the transmission failure, but it was expected. I knew the transmission was going to be a weak point. I thought I might max out this ECU before I maxed out the transmission, but engine seems to be as healthy as could be. 
I do plan on doing some upgrades to it, but for now, I'm gonna get a transmission back in this thing. What do you guys think? Should I manual transmission swap it after I already automatic transmission swapped it? Should I put a nicer automatic transmission in it? Should I try and build the automatic transmission that's in it now? What would you do if this was your truck? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch you next week.